Greetings and salutations. A couple of videos ago, you saw me replace the exhaust system on my Jeep Cherokee. Today I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and rip off uh, the manifolds here and get to the exhaust manifold so they can make the repairs to the crack and to the stud that uh, pulled the threads off. And to do that, all this has to come off. I know there's bound to be somebody out there that says, you don't have to take all that stuff off. You can just pull the bolts for the exhaust manifold and it'll come off. And that might be true. But even if it were true, the fact is, is that you're going to have to replace the gasket anyway. Because if you just pull the exhaust manifold off, the exhaust manifold and, and the intake manifold share a common gasket. So um, if you pull the exhaust manifold off, you're going to break the seal on that uh, gasket. And uh, then you're going to have an exhaust leak at the intake manifold. That's less than ideal. So to do this thing right, you need to pull all that off. Which means power steering pump needs to get removed. You don't have to take it completely out, but it needs to be removed and moved out of the way. And to make room for that, you need to take this fan off. And then you can take uh, the, the bracket for the throttle body. That's got to come off and all the... All the uh, throttle cables and the kick down cable um the uh well this stuff you know the fuel system that needs to be removed all the wiring needs to be moved out of the way and then you can get to the bolts that hold on the manifolds and even with all that stuff out of the way gaining access to the bolts it's not as easy as you would think it would be this is going to turn out to be probably an all-day job once we get through all this and down into the nitty gritty and get the exhaust manifold extracted. I'll show you at that point where you'll typically find cracks and failures in your exhaust header or exhaust manifold, whichever you choose to call it. I call it a header because it looks like one. So anyway, enough of this jaw jacking. I'll set the camera up and give you a pretty decent angle. And uh, I'll just get busy, I guess, tearing things apart. First things first, disconnect the power cable. Actually, disconnect the negative cable. Uh, I think it's a 7 sixteenths. Yeah, that's uh, probably a 12 millimeter. Dang it! That's. Sloppy 12 will do it. Just for the sake of argument, I'm going to do both because I can.
All right, now I'm at a point where I can reach at least the top ones. I'll have to go up underneath it probably or, or uh, do it by braille to get the bolts underneath. But now I can access these. I don't think I need to take the fuel rail off. I'm not going to mess around with taking the, uh, the, the throttle body off. I did discover a few things that need to be addressed. I've got some uh, weepage on the power steering. I've replaced that one once. Um, also, the previous owner installed the oil cooler and butchered and hacked their way into the transmission lines and uh, they were leaking a couple of years ago and I replaced them with what I had on hand which wasn't uh, it was actually it was 3 8 air hose it wasn't it wasn't hydraulic holes or and they rated for oil so I'm probably going to go ahead and clean those up this is the connector for my uh O2 sensor, my upstream O2 sensor, and the wire is no longer in the connector. And it has been replaced once already, so I'm going to have to go and get one of those. So as I, as I progress through this project, I'll make a list of all the stuff that I'm going to fix. gasket and uh, I'm sure it's a Felpro because I think that's what I bought last time and it's like an aluminized it's impregnated with something and it's not paper that one's paper and even though it has ceiling rings around the exhaust ports um, I'm not going to trust them those ceiling rings fail and then it starts to burn the paper and you get exhaust leaks. I, I don't even know why I bought that one. I'm sure it just showed up in my search. I was looking for something else. Can't think of what I was looking for. You know, those search algorithms, you look for something six months ago and all of a sudden it pops up in your recommended feed. Anyway, I bought it on impulse. It was only like five bucks. So I'm not going to fret it. But I am going to get the right gasket because I don't want to do this again for a minute. Now let's take a look at the uh, exhaust manifold. And I'll show you why I'm doing all this. This is a 98 XJ. And so I think in uh, 99 or 2000 they went with a different design that has like a an expansion joint. Which really looks like a oversized wrinkled up pipe. So that there's some give to it. But typically where they crack is here. We're down here at the collector. Right there, there's a hairline crack. And it hasn't gone all the way through yet because I don't see any soot. I don't see any soot from the exhaust. I think there's one on the back side here. No, this one's actually... Junkyard part. Here the stud the stud is uh failed i need to do something about that so i scrape all this material off of here um i'll get out the welder and i'll weld up that crack go over this thing with a fine tooth comb and see if there's any other issues that need to be addressed knock those studs out figure out what i'm going to do for those i'll probably just replace them with grade eight uh, fasteners. I don't think I'll worry about going with stainless or anything like that. And then I'll tack weld those into place and put this thing back together, repair all the other stuff that I mentioned before, and 
and we'll be golden. Knock those studs out. That's what those look like. Well, that's the dickered one. <laughs> that one's still good, but if I can find them, I'll replace them. If I can't, I'm just throwing grade 8 bolts in there and tack, tack welding them in place. Well, as luck would have it, I'm going to have to wait for parts. So yesterday, it's the next day, by the way. So yesterday, I went to the parts store to get... Um, the gasket, the manifold gasket, uh, 3 8 and 5 16 holes so because I wanted to put some in inventory and I needed some 3 8 holes to replace that uh, uh, jacked up freaking uh, hose that was going to the low pressure side of the power steering pump. Uh, I couldn't find any of these studs locally so I just like I said I got some grade 8 bolts and I tack welded them in place and if I ever feel the need to get rid of these and put in the studs I get them. They just won't be here for a week if I decide to buy them, and they're like ten dollars for a pair. You know, these aren't ten dollars for a pair. Somebody put a transmission oil cooler in here, and it was mounted here, but it, there was no mounting up here, so it could actually wiggle back and forth. They have a a better oil cooler in the trailer someplace that has a fan, and I might actually install that one. And when I do, I'm going to install it more towards the back, probably under there somewhere. I'm not too worried about transmission temperatures. I'm more concerned about engine coolant temperatures than I am transmission temperatures. But anyway, what else was I looking for? I cannot find this connector anywhere. So I'm gonna have to go to the junkyard and get it. I think I actually found one at Napa, but they want $45 for it. I'm not paying $45 for an O2 sensor thing. These can also be found on the same generation of Dodge Dakota, probably Durango as well. Um, so I'll be going to the junkyard, if not this week, next week. That's easy to get to. I can do that underneath the vehicle if I have to. I'm not going today. Maybe I'll go tomorrow. I don't know. But I'm going to re I'm remove that, and I'm going to get rid of all the, the um, crappy plumbing that was installed here. And some of it I replaced with even crappier plumbing. But the, they just cut the, the hard line and then spliced rubber line and ran it willy nilly. They didn't really, there's no really, no, there was no real rhyme or reason to the way they did things. And I'm going to try to rectify the situation and kind of tidy things up a little bit. The underside of this drig is just, it's like this, this kind of oily, dirty sludge. And that's all from towing it back and forth. Uh, across uh, America uh, from um, to go to Death Valley you know oil that leaked out from the bus and so the underside of this thing is just coated in that detritus uh, this line right here is the one they cut and this this is uh from the transmission to the cooler and then it comes out of the cooler it goes to here right now it comes out of the cooler and went to this line, this line right here, and then that goes to the uh, the, the factory cooler, and then that comes out this one right here. <sighs> Can you see that? And it goes back. This comes from the, the factory cooler and goes back to the transmission. So they put in 
actually, these are the lines that I replaced because the the lines that were in here were like they were pretty bad, and, and this is all I had at the time, and it didn't a pinch. So I'm gonna take all this apart and uh, try to splice things back together. I don't know how that's gonna work, but we'll see. So there's the gasket that I got. Part number, can't read it. There's the part number, MS16120. Compare this gasket with the Felpro, which is part number MS94790. This says it's for an AMC four liter. It matches up with the old gasket. It would have worked, but I'm not gonna use it. Because it's such a pain in the ass to do this job. No, it's not really a pain in the ass. It just takes time. So, this gasket was 20 bucks. I think I paid six for that one. He even has a little thing here that says manifold side, so you don't put it on backwards. That's awesome. Coincidentally, um, the Felpro gasket is available at AutoZone too, and it was fifteen ninety nine. The one I paid six bucks for, yeah, sixteen bucks at the AutoZone. All right. Put the header back in and you have a stud on both ends one here one over there that you can't see because it's back there tucked in that dark little corner but you got a bolt on either end and that will allow you to tighten this down and uh, and then once once this is tightened down i'll tighten the uh the flange bolts down and then i'll clean the intake manifold up and install the intake manifold and then the, all the bolts that go into the intake manifold also I'll uh, hold the exhaust manifold in place. Okay, I'll get the intake manifold and clean that gasket surface up. What did I do with the intake manifold? It's right, it's right there. Big as life, it's right there. It is really dirty. Well, I'll clean the gasket surface up and then I'll start bolting that on.
All right, I'm going to stop there. Uh, so that's basically what you got to go through to get to the intake manifold slash exhaust manifold gaskets. Um, I have new radiator hoses coming. Uh, I was going to buy some yesterday when I was at the parts store, but they want 20 bucks a piece for them. <laughs> Might have got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But I got uh, one upper and two lowers. And the, the plan is to take this, this upper hose, which is good, and put that in my excursion kit. And I'll put the new lower hose in that kit. So it's just stuff that I bring with me when I'm out on the trail. And uh, this lower hose here, here, we had been sitting, I'm surprised it didn't blow when we were in uh, the Death Valley in November. But uh, the power steering low pressure line had a, um, one of these stainless clamps like this. And then the radiator hose, the lower radiator hose was laying right on top of it. There's a hole almost worn all the way through the lower radiator hose. And I'm just glad it didn't blow when they're out in the middle of nowhere. So I'm going to get two new ones of this, put one in there, put one in the kit. So I have both a lower and upper radiator hose for the next time I go out desert bombing, whenever that may be. And, um, and then I'll wrap all this up. You won't see it. I think, oh, I plug, plug that in. <laughs> I think maybe tomorrow I'm going to go see if I can find one of these. Wish me luck. So if you found this video to be entertaining and informative, smash the like button and share it with your vast social media network. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing. Click the bell icon and click check the box. Do all the things so that you be notified of future uploads. The link in the description is on how you can support this channel if you feel so inclined. If you can afford to do any of those things, thank you in advance. I really appreciate it if you can't. Okay. Comment in the comment section if you're so inclined. If for nothing else, and just to say hi. Hi, how you doing? So until next time, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep powder, have a splendid day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.